Hi, my name is Dr. Jennifer Logue. I am a clinical reader in metabolic medicine here at the Institute of Cardiovascular and Medical Sciences. And I'm also an honorary consultant in metabolic medicine in NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. My research and my clinical focus is on the treatment of obesity and the treatment of diseases that are related to obesity. So that includes cardiovascular disease and diabetes, along with another range of diseases such as sleep apnea, fatty liver disease, Disease, and even conditions like psoriasis that can all be made far worse by having excess weight. What my research really tries to focus on is ways that we can integrate people losing weight within the treatment programmes for these other conditions and how we can do that in the most effective way possible. So obviously this institute is focused on cardiovascular disease and obesity is a major risk factor for a range of cardiovascular diseases, not just coronary artery disease, but also um, certain forms of heart failure and certain forms of cardiomyopathy, that is dilation of the heart and the heart not pumping as well, are all related to obesity. And for these conditions, it's felt that losing weight will help them get better. Type 2 diabetes is also another major cardiovascular problem, and it's one that we do studies on in this institute, looking at new ways to treat it. My work looks at the prevention of type 2 diabetes through physical activity and weight loss, but also the treatment of type 2 diabetes through, again, weight loss, physical activity, but trying to make sure that those are prolonged and maintained in order to ensure that the effects of those are um, felt for as long as possible. Today is World Obesity Day, and this year's event is focused on obesity stigma. Unfortunately, obesity stigma is one of the last socially acceptable forms of discrimination. We see it everywhere, not just in our media and on our television screens, but actually also, unfortunately, in our healthcare practices. We know that people that are suffering from obesity are less likely to visit their doctor, are likely to have shorter consultation times, and are far less likely to take up opportunities for screening and preventative medicine. This is unfortunately often due to negative experiences they've had in the past. Often this isn't deliberate, it is just misplaced words or unintentional comments that can really affect an individual's confidence in that healthcare professional. One study that we are working on here in the Institute of Cardiovascular and Medical Sciences is called Small Talk, Big Difference. What this study is aiming to do is help provide people working primarily in primary care, that's GPs and practice nurses, with some of the, the tools and tips that they need to help make those conversations about weight far better and far more effective. So that is helping them raise the issue of weight and the issue of weight management and helping them encourage and motivate patients to go and be able to seek help and make changes. This is particularly important in people with type 2 diabetes and with other conditions as we know that this can result in real meaningful difference to their clinical conditions. Just now, actually, unfortunately, a large number of people with these conditions are not getting access to weight management because there is a reluctance in the clinical community to talk about weight. This study is just finishing. We've trained on 100 GP practices across Greater Glasgow and Clyde and we'll have the results out very soon. There's lots of help available for people that uh, want to lose weight. And in fact, I would always say to people, go and seek help because we know that people do better at managing to maintain their weight loss if they have support from peers, that can be friends and family, or it can be people that you go to a group with. There are things that you can go to yourself, that be commercial weight management companies in the community or through gyms. There's also many online groups that you can join. However, there's also things available through the NHS, particularly if you have a condition such as diabetes, or cardiovascular disease, or you're at high risk of developing one of these conditions. So I would suggest that you call your GP practice or make an appointment to speak to your practice nurse to find out what's available in your area.